Hey kids! Last year I looked at some amazing European video games. The Dutch Yogo Yogo and the French Largo Winch. Now here's some more European gaming goodness. This time from Belgium. Belgia, Bel... Belgia, whatever. Out of all the European comic book heroes non-Europeans give a damn about, Tintin is the most damn's given hero of all. Readers young and old have been charmed by his exciting adventures. Ah, I remember my first Tintin story. A cozy Sunday afternoon. Me and my sister leaving through Tintin in the Congo. An exciting adventure where Tintin is an asshole, kills innocent animals, is a racist, is an asshole, kills more animals, is more racist. Ah, Tintin was the comic book hero who inspired me to start drawing. That is, my sister and I spent the rest of the afternoon drawing arrows and knives into every panel, so Tintin dies a horrible death in every drawing. Ah, good times. Tintin, as you all know, is the world's famous reporter. What made him such an incredible reporter, you ask? Well, it's because he never takes notes, never makes photos, never interviews people, constantly lets other reporters steal away his story. The one time Tintin was in a mystery involving reporters, he spent most of the adventure being completely oblivious and even shocked at every single reporterish thing going on, and never bothered to call the office or interact with his colleague reporters in any way. My personal favorite reporter moment of him wasn't Tintin in America though, where he publishes an article in the newspaper about his plans to infiltrate the American Mafia for some scoops, so that every single gangster in the whole world already knows about Tintin, and send assassins after him even before a stupid little undercover mission could start. Sure, an amazing reporter is dad deserves some epic video games! And Infogram stepped in. Their first game was Tintin on the Moon for the Amiga, Commodore 64 and MS-DOS. And it looks like this! Uh, I'm sure it was amazing back then. But then, in 1995, they made a brand new game, this time for the Super Nintendo, Mega Drive and Windows 95. Tintin and Tibet. Now, from all Tintin comic books over the years, Tintin and Tibet is considered the best one. It's the most emotional evolved, lots of character development. Hergé made it based on some recurring nightmares he had, so it's very intense and he considers it the series finale. So from a story perspective, this is a great choice. However, from a video game perspective, it is a horrible choice since Tintin and Tibet doesn't have any real villains and very few set pieces and it's the most wrong Tintin story to make an action game out of. Outside of perhaps the Castafiore Emerald, though that game could have been a neat point and click mystery adventure at least. Right, so Tintin and Tibet, an adventure mostly about people walking in the snow. How can we make a video game out of that? Well, let's take a look. Ah, so the game starts with Tintin in a Chinese train, which immediately crashes. This is actually a flashback stage based on Tintin and the Blue Lotus, which would have been a better video game choice. Actually having bad guys and some hilarious racism against Japan. But alas, outside of this one level we're mostly stuck in Tintin and Tibet. Whatever. Go. Ah! Foreigners throwing luggage at me! Bastards. Ah! More foreigners! Run, Tintin, run! Oh yeah, you saw that right. Forget other lame platform heroes who deal with enemies by shooting, punching, and jumping. Oh no, not Tintin, man. He fights enemies by running scared into the foreground. Awesome. Ah! Little puffs of smoke, look out, Tintin! Nah, I'm just joking, I know that's team, which can hurt a lot. Still, it looks kind of funny as an action game danger. <laughs> so, after some light platforming, we see a child about to drown in the water. Oh no, go save him, Tintin! Finally, an action set piece worthy of our heroic action hero. But uh, hey Tintin, that kid trying to avoid being dragged away is going faster than you deliberately swimming after him. That's kind of pathetic. Hell, those weightless barrels floating on water actually move faster in the water than you. What I'm trying to say is, you kind of suck at swimming, Tintin. Despite everything, we manage to save him, and Tintin tells this stunning story to his friend Captain Haddock. The captain considers this story, and considers it, and considers it. Wow, he's really thinking about that. Oh wait, this is the gameplay and not a cutscene anymore. Oh, okay, okay, so I'm safely back in Europe. Hotel on the French Alps, finally away from the scary foreign- ah! Did that waiter hurt me? Careful, Tintin, he's probably a spy of an evil gangster! Run, Tintin! Ah! Another one! Oh, so they're just clumsy waiters. Jeez, I'm just a guy on vacation, give me a break. Okay, so I will complain to, to the management. Walking this way and ooh, a nice lady with a vacuum cleaner. She'll probably uh, kill me. What? Tintin, do you have people's phobia or something? Why are you dying when touching waiters and nice ladies? You're a reporter, man. You're supposed to deal with people. Ah, oh, the nice little doggy. I wonder if... Ah, it also kills me. Run away. So you get a cutscene which doesn't really tell you what to do. So you just run around aimlessly in the hotel of doom and hell. 
until you bump into the next cutscene. Must find the captain, he has a letter for us. Ah, go find the captain and... Uh, where is he? Ah, so wondering the scary hotel again and... <coughs> time limit? I'm just a guy on vacation, why the time crisis? Find the captain and you get your letter. Jen's dead! What horrible news! Tintin said with a bright smile. Ah, 1995 graphics. That night, Tintin gets a nightmare, so off to stage 3. So, where are we now? Ah, marketplace. Ah, marketplace! Oh damn, oh damn, oh damn! Oh, ah, look out, Tintin! A lady called me scooting around on a bicycle! Run, run! No, you fool, run! Oh shit, there's deadly people everywhere! Ah! Plastic garden decorations! Oh god, Tintin, please! No! God. Ah! Another person called me riding her bike! You'll never get me alive! Ooh, a little bell! Ah, when you touch it, you actually see it move and kill Tintin. So then there's a kid we need to follow. He runs to the left, we run to the left into a wall. Obviously, we were supposed to run to the right instead. Next level, the storm! We need to follow the kid, so we run after him into a wall again. Stop asking me to follow you when you constantly run into the wrong direction, you brat! Wow, I'm shocked! Those raindrops don't kill Tintin! The guy's so fragile a falling leaf would kill him. Those weightless barrels floating in the water are deadly, though. Ah, I like the graphics here. The details of the rain, the water splashing around. You even see some leaves moving in the storm, snapping, and flying through the air, weightlessly carried by the gentle wind. And when they gently touch Tintin's face, it fucking kills him. <laughs> what, you thought I was being sarcastic before? Oh, no, 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 we're playing a game where the hero dies by touching a falling leaf here. The developers took Tintin, you know, this guy. I thought, yep, that's the kind of guy who dies when touching a leaf. Anyway, we finally go climbing a mountain where we see many dangers like ah, a little pebble rolling around, mommy. Tintin randomly falls off a cliff, of course, and everything kills you. Sometimes Tintin just dies because he touched a rock. Sometimes Tintin just dies because he touched a branch. Sometimes Tintin just dies because. So we finally get into the eternal snow part, and uh, why am I constantly playing with Tintin? Why can't I play as the captain? That guy rules. Whatever. So walking in the snow, avoiding horrible dangers like <gasps> snippets of paper flying in the wind. Oh look, an airplane propeller weightlessly nudging in the wind. I wonder if it's deadly. Oh, what a surprise. Then the next level is a cave, which is a maze as well. Uh, I hate mazes. Forget it. Ah, if only they'd picked a different, more adventurous comic instead of the Tibet one. And they did, for the sequel, Prisoners of the Sun, based on a two-parter adventure dealing with gangsters and Indians and ghosts, awesome! Let's see how that video game goes. Can we fire up the old Super Nintendo? Uh, <laughs> so, what epic set piece is our first level? It's a um, museum. Museum? Ah! People everywhere! Ah! A museum guard casually walking while I'm just a regular museum patron, specifically invited to be in the museum. Ah! The scientist guy in the lab coat that just walks. Ah! More people just walking. Why are there so many people at this museum during visiting hours? Ah! A little girl's toy. Run, Tintin! Run for God's sake before there's more people just staring at the exhibits. Oh God! Oh God! Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh my god, oh, oh, we're safe, oh, we're in an empty room now, oh, no scary people staring at things, nothing but just boxes, and Tintin dies because he touched the wood splinter. So after that we get more epic levels, like some guy's living room and that guy's backyard. However, after that we finally get to deal with gangsters trying to shoot Tintin, more elaborate set pieces like the runaway train cart, running for an avalanche, dealing with giant snake, and escape a ritual. Heck, believe it or not, Tintin can actually fight in this game! Why yes! Tintin versus random generic root guy from Village! Tintin has many fighting moves like dodging an attack, dodging indifferently, and running away like a little girl. Keep just kind of walking around until your opponent hurts himself and then he walks off. Oh. Tintin wins! Epicality! <laughs> Who needs Street Fighter or Daryl Life when you got freaking Tintin, man? 
So yeah, those were the Super Nintendo Tintin games. Infogrames made a fourth game, now for the PlayStation and PC, called Destination Adventure. The story is about that Tintin and his companions watch TV while Doc Snowy falls asleep who's dreaming of Tintin also watching TV, which shows his previous adventures, where the dog talks to Tintin about bones and... Uh, yeah. This game is a bit too crazy and unrealistic to me. It takes way too many liberties with the source material. I mean, look, here Tintin can actually defeat and kill enemies by making photographs of them. That is crazy, stupid, unrealistic and entirely unfaithful to the source material. I mean, really. Really? Tintin actually using a photo camera? That would actually make him an almost adequate reporter. That's crazy. Damn you, infograms. No wonder that was the last game. So yeah, Tintin's video games were over. Or were they? Some time ago, Spielberg and Jackson made a Hollywood movie, so of course there's a new video game about it. So, will those lame Hollywood hacks understand our European heritage? Will they get the essence of Tintin right? What the hell was that? Exciting adventure action? No, no, no! I don't want to punch bad guys and have spectacular chases. I want Tintin who gets killed when he touches a leaf or a children's toy. Hollywood doesn't get it at all, as usual. I mean, if any of you guys ever watch my old animation, Sonic Movie Madness, and wonder what was up with this joke, well, now you know. But, my dear audience, let us not disregard Tintin's manliness too much now. Despite how lame he can sometimes be, and how much I love mocking him, I can't deny that in a time where American cartoons couldn't show any violence on screen, and heroes like Batman were incredibly lame on TV, Tintin happily fucking shot and killed animals on children's TV shows in the 70s. Heck yeah, take that you American pussies. Roger out.